Hey, I think uh, I think we're all coming back in. Um, hopefully, lunch went well. I don't know about you, but it was it was good. Nice break, chance to chat with people, which was always good. Um, we're going to make a shift, but before we uh, leave what we did this morning, in your handouts, there were several other things we didn't get to, but they were all just samples of strategies. So there are four strategies that uh, had the same kind of slide, a description of what it is and what it looks like. Um, I will be sending and providing for you the handouts for the different strategies with the assessment guides and scoring rubrics or scoring guides, whatever they may be. I'm happy to share anything and everything. So if you want like a, a strategy or a activity guide for some of the experiments or some of the activities that we've done, happy to share any and all of that. So I'm a big fan of sharing educational materials. So if there's anything or a video, I can give you links to all the different videos that we've done. So questions about that in this morning before we change? All right, so this more, uh, this afternoon what we're going to do is switch gears and, and address how do we try to, from the beginning, to include all of our students in the learning process so that we can get them to, to move forward. So we'll be talking about uh, in, inclusive pedagogy and active pedagogy, the active part of, of which we did some this morning. Okay. Now as we move forward, we have the same mantra. It's all about fostering deep and um, flexible learning. We've talked about processing, we'll do that a little bit more. We'll also talk about how do we handle people as individuals so that we at least don't get in their way, but hopefully provide an environment in which they can thrive. Okay. Now, we're gonna do another quick anticipation guide. So I'm gonna show you three statements. I want you to agree, disagree, or what would you edit relative to these three statements. Okay, what I'd like you to do is to, in your groups, share what you have. Where did you agree? Where did you disagree? What would you like to change in order to make the world a better place? Wow, that's it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Down to about a minute or two. Coming back together again. All right. Uh, let's see. Give me a number between one and three. Two point seven. Thank you very much. <laughs> we'll, we'll go ahead and round up. Uh, the instructor's job is to present. The student's job is to learn. How many in general agree with that? No one. How many people in general don't agree with that? How many would like to change it? So either no or maybe change, but mostly no. So talk to me about no slash why you'd want to change it, or yes if you just didn't want to. Can I ask a slight other question? Sure. How many people are, if they believe yes, agree with it, are afraid to raise their hand in this session? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, there might be some social pressure involved in this one. Uh, yes. So you believe that killing cats is appropriate, or that. Uh, you know, peanut butter is better than jelly. Um, so, comments on number three. Yeah. Comments on number three, yes. I sometimes um, say to students, uh, everyone has something to teach, and everyone has something to learn. And it's okay. So we blur the line between instructor and student, that everybody has something to teach, everybody has something to learn. Okay. Um, I would reply to that, though, that we often hear the phrase, you only learn something when you teach it these phrases that the act of having to reframe it, so, so what you said. So I would still put that under learning. I guess my issue is with the first half of the, the yeah. course and the second. I don't actually mind the student's job is to learn, because I think that it can incorporate Colleen what you were just saying. Is it the instructor's job to learn as well? Yeah. Okay, so we got some, some nods there. Okay. All right. What else do you think about number three? Depends on what you let me go back here. Let me go here, then I'm going to Oh, I was just going to say, I do think that the whoever the instructor is, I do think that you have a responsibility, we have an additional responsibility to portray the curriculum and to engage students with the curriculum, to craft things in ways that will bring students into the learning process. I mean, that's why we're there. So there's more to it. Right. You don't yeah. have to present things, but you have to figure out a way to portray it to get at your enthusiasm and, your, and, and those to, to help salt the oats. Sure. Yeah, there's more to it. I'm just curious, would it be okay if you replaced the word present with the word teach? Does, that, does the word teach incorporate all the things you just said? I, I think in a, if we were going to re-co-opt the word and talk about it, I think I would say yes. But I think that what, what's happened in my mind is the word teach has become synonymous with all the things that the teacher does and forgets to get at the what does the student learn in the process. And so that's why I don't know that I've figured out a way to do co op that board. Sure. Well, there was an article in 95 by Barn Tag, and the essence of the article was that um, 
higher institution needs to shift from its mission being teaching to its mission being learning. So it kind of goes along with what you were saying. Um, yes, we are teachers and we teach, but if students aren't learning, then we haven't done you know, what it is we set out to do. So somebody over here was going to say something. Well, I was just going to highlight the idea that define present, because if my job is just to present, well, I'm teaching while I'm presenting, I'm showing how to do things when I present, I'm explaining concepts when I'm, I'm presenting the whole time. So mm -hmm. to the extent that you're fishing for a yes, I agree, you could derive it out of that. Yeah, yeah and, and I'm happy to have no yeses. Uh, what we've done is, is boiled down something extremely complex to a statement that is uh, questionable on pretty much all levels. So again, as an anticipation act, part of this is to foster discussions. Yes? Oh, well, I, mean, I was just thinking, the circuit shop would present, and it is very easy to kind of jump on that and negate that, but as I was just even thinking and hearing, one thing that I'm especially thinking about with this conversation so far has been, I mean, thinking about academic freedom and thrift and some of those other things where part of the real learning happens is we know students need to be reading hundreds of pages a week. They need to be doing some writing and responding and talking in class. And I think in one way we should retain this idea of the instructor's job is to present, but present not just, as you're saying, talking in front of the room, but present like the truth. Let me present Mr. So-and-so. Let me present Ms. So-and-so. Let me introduce you to this person. Let you get interested in kind of engender an interest in students actually doing the reading yeah and it's important to understand that 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 process looks different in different areas because um, I was thinking when you said you know you have to read a you know 100 or 200 pages a week and I think there's some other areas where they'd be thinking what mm -hmm. because that's not their focus and so it looks different in different areas so depending on what your <coughs> outcomes are for your students what you want them to learn in, in mine I have them go back in and read some of the original works and work their way forward, because sometimes the secondary and tertiary sources have lost the deep meaning. So I completely agree. Mine will read, a, a, oftentimes my grad students will read a book a week plus articles and things like that, because that's the nature of who they are and what we're instructing. When I'm doing teaching the teacher um, college teaching class, it looks very different, because I, I have whole different outcomes. My tired brain actually read it as being present, and oh wow! And it got me thinking about what that means to me would be fully present. Sure. So cognitively, affectively, behaviorally, uh, so that one can respond in the moment. To yeah. Yeah, if this turns into a mindfulness one of being fully present, then yeah, I'm completely with you. We should be fully present with what we're doing and where we are. Yeah, we just, what, we're in need of an article up there, I think. Yes, um, I don't think the instructor or the student has a job. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Do you have a, a different word of that, of, you know, either um, or? Responsibility, calling. Mm -hmm. Sure, I would agree. I think that's great. Yeah, because rarely do I feel like I'm doing a job. Like when I'm here, I'm not doing a job. I'm just, I'm loving this. So, you know, this is not my job. So, um, okay. Here we go. So, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do a little bit of learning first. Anytime I'm with a group, and especially even though I've been with you this morning, we need to re-examine the learning process and make sure that we're on board with that. Uh, talk a little bit about um, who's pedagogy and content, context, and then some strategies. Okay. So, with that in mind, oops. Um, part of this is um, the need to plan ahead, the need to plan where we're going as we continue to think about active learning and proactive teaching. A large part of it is the need to plan. And so here's a quick video to get us in the frame of mind that we need to plan. <laughs> I'm thinking he probably could have used some help from a physicist to uh, figure out exactly how fast he had to go or whatever the case may be. And who knows? You know, maybe, maybe she, what's that? Where's the pulley? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yep. All right. So, uh, so we need to keep that in mind as we move forward. So let's. Uh, Think about, in this case, we're going to do a quick activity. And um, we are going to hand out a 
sheet. Now we need to hand it out upside down and you can't peek, which is gonna be hard because you've been trained for years to really look and cover things. So we're gonna hand these out, but don't look at it yet, which is why I haven't handed it out yet. Okay, so let me explain what this is going to be. Does everybody have one? A sheet? Okay. So, what I'm going to do is read you a series of uh, statements and examples. So, for instance, the first one is a day of the week, Thursday. So, I'll read what something is, and then I'll give you an example of that thing. Okay? And I'm going to read you a whole list of those. And then we're going to do something with it. So all I need you to do right now is listen. Okay. So you ready for this? All right. A day of the week, Thursday. A government leader, king. A type of bird, cardinal. A famous psychologist, Thorndike. A menu item, wine. A personality trait, charm. A vegetable, cabbage. Associated with heat, stove. A round object, ball. Found in the jungle, leopard. A crime, stealing. A baseball position, pitcher. Associated with cold, north. Song accompaniment, banjo. Taken to a birthday party, present. A girl's name, Susan. A type of footgear, boots. A man-made structure, bridge. A weapon, cannon. A sweet food, banana. An indication of possession, mine. A large city, Tokyo, a sign of happiness, smile. A student, pupil, a long word, notwithstanding, has four wheels, Chevrolet, a part of a bird, Bill, a member of the family, grandfather, a favorite time of the year, winter. Part of a word, letter, a tool, wrench. Part of a holiday, motel. A type of sports equipment, racket. Part of a building, chimney. Made of leather, saddle. A tropical plant, palm. A synonym for big. Colossal. Associated with lunch, noon, part of the intestine, colon. Okay, now, in a minute I'm going to ask you to flip the paper over. And what you're going to find is down the left-hand side a series of descriptors that lead you to the words I just gave you. Some of the descriptors will be what you just heard, some will not. But all the words that you just heard should be used somewhere. It shouldn't have to, you would want to use the same word twice. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So flip it over. I'm going to give you about three to five minutes. Fill out as many words as you can find or remember from what I just said.
once you feel like you have gone through the list and you're, you've gotten the ones you could get, then I want you to score it. The scoring is to the right hand side, you'll see the numbers one, two, or three. Count off the number of words you recall that have one next to them. Then count out the number of words that you recall that had a two next to it. And the number of words you remembered with a three next to it and put those numbers down the bottom of the page. Yeah, we will check them in a minute, but for now go ahead and assume they're correct. Yeah, I know. Might be a well, large. Yeah, that's, that's right. about two minutes and then we're going to work on the scoring. sharing our scores. You should end up with three scores. The scores for the ones, the twos, and the threes. <coughs> okay, let's work on coming together now. All right. So what I want to do is to gather some data. Uh, let's start off with your score for the number one items. Uh, how many people, and again, they're among friends, how many had a zero of the one words? Zero? May have one, two, three, good, four, five, good, six, good, seven, nice, eight, good, nine, Good, 12, no, not 10, <laughs> 10, good, 11, wow. good, 12, nice. 13, okay, there's 13 items. So distributed pretty well with an average probably around 10, between 10 and 11. So we had a lot of 10, 11, and 12. What's that? I like how you make up data. It reminds me of my students. Oh, I didn't make that up. I did the calculation and my computer knew what to do. Very technical stuff we do. Um, so yeah, just round it around. All right, let's get number twos. How many had zero number twos? Excellent. One. Good. Two. Good. Three. Four. Five. Nice. Six. Good. Seven. Good. Eight. Nine. Good. Ten. Excellent. Eleven. Nice. Twelve. Whoa. 13, yeah, that's tough for number twos. So we're right around the eight and nine. That's where we're getting most of the hands coming up for that one. Now let's go to number threes, the number threes. How many had zero? Sweet, all right, very nice. Ones, good. Twos, good. Threes, good. Fours, fives, six, sevens, eight, Nice. 
Nine. Ten. Good. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. All right, good. So we had a mean score right around that three to four range. Okay? Or maybe a little lower. That's all right. So what I'd like you to do, I'm going to give you about a minute. Look at the, what is the difference between the ones, the twos, and the threes? So as a group, come up with an explanation of what are the number ones, what are the number twos, and what are the number threes? Because they're all categories. Exactly the same. So we take a look at it. Oops, back up. Uh, same Q both times. So associated with cold north. Okay, how about number two? Q was the same definition of a word but a different prompt. Okay, so same definition, banana both times, but a sweet food and a fruit. So they both lead banana, the meaning of banana stays the same. And what's about number three? So three is completely different. Okay, the different cue meaning shifted. Part of the intestine was a colon and a punctuation mark was colon. Okay. Now the question then becomes, why, why bother in doing this? What was important? Um, and the takeaway, and there's a couple of them. One is we, we've been talking before that holding on to things abstractly is a challenge. When the, the meaning changes completely, we have a hard time bringing that back forward. And we need some sort of continuity, which is the number twos. So the number twos, what's really important, and the reason why I, I had us do this was, in our seven principles, principles two and three is about changing the purpose, changing the task. And number two here is about making that change. It's still the same meaning, so it would be still the same um, knowledge and skills and attitudes that you want in your class, but we're getting at it in a different way. Versus one, which is, here's my specific problem, here's my specific solution, and those always remain the same. We are good at learning A and A. Okay? And, and oftentimes in universities, we get students who are good at that. Okay? We get some students who struggle with that. But oftentimes, like at tech, what we've noticed is we have a lot of students who are really good at, if you just tell me what you want, mm -hmm. I'll get it back to you. Yeah. I can do that. But that's not what we want, because that, for the most part, isn't the way the world works. We want somebody who can think more flexibly. What this demonstrates is that if we start looking at that perspective of heading towards flexible knowledge where you have to address it in different ways, even though the meaning remains the same, it slows us down. 
Okay, we learn less. So from a student standpoint, say, so just tell me what you need and I'll do it. 